Welcome to this webinar on accurate ground modelling in Design Builder. I'm Dave Cocking, and the main presenter today will be Nishesh Jain. Ranjith Jayapalan Naya will also help us to answer your questions. We're assuming everybody watching today is already familiar with Design Builder and its capabilities. If not, it shouldn't be a problem as Nishesh will point out some useful learning resources at the end, including free online tutorials and past webinar recordings. This webinar covers the increasingly important topic of ground heat transfer modeling. Advances in building performance design in recent years mean that most new and renovated buildings are, or at least should now be, significantly more energy efficient. So design variables that may previously have been given less attention, like thermal bridging and this topic of ground heat transfer, are now likely to contribute relatively more to the overall building heat gains and losses. And that can impact both energy consumption and thermal comfort. Nishesh's presentation will discuss the various Energy Plus ground heat transfer modelling methods in Design Builder, including the latest Kiva method. Please note that we'll only be discussing ground heat transfer in the context of the building and its foundations. Although there is some crossover with aspects of HVAC modelling, we're not explicitly discussing ground source heat pump borehole modelling, for example. Design Builder was the first commercial software to implement the Energy Plus Kiva method back in early 2021. There have been some tweaks and improvements based on the learning from our earlier V7.0 releases, and the Shesh will talk you through those today. Okay, that's the introduction complete. I'll now hand over to Nishesh. Thanks, Dave. Um... Hello, uh, welcome everyone um, to this webinar. So in this webinar, we will be starting by discussing the importance of key aspects to consider while modeling ground heat transfers. Next, we will look at various ways in which you can define and model ground geometry in your buildings. After this, I'll go to the main focus of the webinar, the different ground modeling methods. We will explore the standard method and the Kiva method, understand the key differences, the respective inputs needed, and which method is better suited in which situation. <clears throat> there are a number of ground modeling aspects that should be defined properly for accurate modeling. The first and most obvious aspect is to have the correct constructions for the ground adjacent surfaces. Ground slabs and below grade basement walls are defined correctly by most modelers, but it is typically seen that the impact of foundations and footings are often ignored. Another important aspect is ground temperatures. These temperatures are ground boundary conditions and affect the extent of conductive heat gains and losses through the slab from or into the ground. Also related to the ground temperature are the other thermal characteristics of the ground, such as its material and their properties. These properties affect ground's thermal storage and the rate of heat transfer. Finally, the surface properties of exposed ground also affect the simulations due to ground reflections and re-radiations. So, using the correct surface absorption and emission factors is important. These are the key user-related input parameters uh, that you have to get right in your simulations. Moving on now, let's discuss the ways to define ground adjacency in your models. There are three ways in which you can do that. First is by using the auto adjacency detection. In Design Builder, the adjacency of a surface is determined automatically based on its position. 
this is switched on by default this means that the external surfaces on or below the ground plane that is z equals to zero or less are considered to be adjacent to ground automatically this was typically applied to surfaces such as slabs on ground or below grade basement walls etc however if you have a non flat ground terrain you can also use the ground component blocks as well to define the ground such as you can see in the image the ground is the green colored ground component block when using ground component blocks any surface or parts of surface that touch a, the ground component block will have a ground adjacency assigned to it automatically finally if you feel for some reason you want to disable the auto adjacency for some of the surfaces you can also hard set the adjacency at individual surfaces to be adjacent to ground manually on the construction tab at the surface levels however i would suggest as good practice to use the auto adjacency options and component blocks as typical ways to set ground adjacency only change adjacency manually if you really have to as this can make it harder to qa check your model let's look at these three models uh, uh, methods of the software uh, in design builder as well the model i'm using in this demonstration is the design builder video tutorials example model which is a small office building two floors central atrium with open plan office on each side of it as mentioned design builder automatically assigns the ground adjacency to the surfaces resting on the ground plane um, for example if i going to the zone level you can see that the ground adjacency is assigned to the floor as adjacent to ground also if you have a basement such as this design builder automatically removes the default facades and assigns ground adjacency to all the surfaces you can see here at the zone level all ground adjacent surfaces are set as adjacent to ground the other way to define ground adjacency especially in uneven terrain is to use ground component blocks you can use the add block tool change the block type to component block and the component block type to ground and then draw the block on any of the surfaces or anywhere in the model so this is the ground component block and if i go to the surface i can see that the ground adjacency has been assigned to the surface um, at the level at which the ground component block intersects the facade as mentioned earlier it is recommended to set the ground adjacencies to, uh, by using the automated techniques or with component blocks however if you do want to set adjacency manually you can do this at a at the surface level for example if i go to a surface then go to the construction tab you will have a setting available for adjacency this can be changed from auto to not adjacent to ground or adjacent to ground this setting is available at the surface level and can be changed in the model data tab for individual surfaces one by one or can be done in bulk by using the model data grid view tool here in model data grid view you can see and edit model data in more convenient grid view format 
you can see program help and our tutorials to learn more about model data grid view. Here are a few examples of buildings where ground component blocks have been used to model uneven terrain. Design builders geometry tools allow you to model complex geometries like this very flexibly and quickly. There are two main ways to model heat transfers between the ground, the external environment and the building. The standard method and the Kiva method. The standard method is typically used in all traditional modeling. It uses 12 fixed monthly ground temperatures. The other option, Kiva, uses a multi-dimensional finite heat transfer calculation to determine the ground temperatures and the resultant heat transfers. This is especially needed around foundation and building perimeter. Let's look at each of these in more detail with their modeling setup. Starting with the standard ground modeling, as I mentioned earlier, in the standard method of ground modeling, a set of 12 fixed ground monthly temperatures are used. These temperatures define the temperature on the outside boundary of the building ground adjacent surfaces. Conceptually, this is the simplest method since it is based on one dimensional ground heat transfer. However, it requires prior knowledge of the ground temperature just below the building for accurate calculations of heat transfer between the ground and the building. Depending on the modeling case, these temperatures can be estimated using rules of thumb, but in practice, knowing them accurately is rare. Let's look at the setting of the standard ground modeling method and discuss its inputs and applications. Ground modeling settings are defined on the site location tab under the site details header within the ground header. Most of the settings that relate to ground are defined here. Under the surface header, texture is just the texture used in the rendered view and visualization. The surface solar and visible reflectance characterizes the average reflectivity of the ground throughout the year and is used to calculate the ground reflected solar radiation. The value varies between 0 and 1 with surfaces such as grass or concrete have a value of 0 0.2 or lighter surrounding building surfaces can be 0 0.6. Snow modifiers are used to modify the basic ground reflectance values when there is snow on ground. Program help can explain the values to use in these inputs in various scenarios. The ground modeling method here selected is the standard method. Here we can select the other methods as well, such as Kiva, which we will do later in the webinar. Because we have the modeling method selected as standard, the ground monthly temperatures are defined here. They, these are used as boundary conditions for the ground in the simulations. There are 12 fields allowing you to represent the mean ground temperature for each month of the year. These temperatures are the temperatures that you might have just below the ground floor or any ground adjacent construction. So the depth at which these temperatures apply depends on the thickness of the ground or relevant surface construction. It is generally not appropriate to use the undisturbed ground temperatures from weather files directly in this application. Those values in weather files are too extreme for soil under typical condition building. This is because the temperature beneath the buildings is significantly affected by the building itself. Energy Plus documentation recommends 
using ground temperatures of 2 degrees Celsius below the average internal temperatures for large commercial buildings where perimeter heat loss is relatively less important. When using this 2 degrees Celsius approach, temperature should be applied directly below the slab and therefore uh, there should not be any earth layers in the ground adjacent constructions. For smaller buildings, estimating the temperatures are a little tricky because they do not end up affecting the ground underneath very much. Therefore, the ground temperatures under smaller buildings will be somewhere in between the 2 degree below average internal temperature levels and the undisturbed ground temperatures. Therefore, Kiva can be useful and beneficial in these cases as temperatures will be calculated during the simulation by the engine. These deep and shallow temperatures are not related to the ground modeling as such. They represent the undisturbed temperatures and are used in set point manager control options in detailed HVAC. Design Builder also offers heat transfer calculations from ground using ASHRAE methods based on F factor constructions for ASHRAE 90.1 calculations. A different method is used for UK uh, DSM compliance calculations to comply with UK national calculation methodology. These methods are outside the scope of this webinar. However, the key thing to remember is that with F factor and C factor constructions, the ground modeling method selected should be standard method only. However, uh, also when switching from compliance to energy plus unconstrained simulations, other methods can be used. Please refer to the program help for more details on this if required. So these are the key main ground related aspects that need to be defined at the site level. Going back to the building level. So other thing to keep in mind when modeling ground is to define the ground adjacent constructions correctly. On the constructions tab, ground floor, below grade walls, basement ground floor, are typical ground adjacent constructions used in the model. As discussed earlier, it is generally best not to add earth layers to ground adjacent constructions. When assessing ground modeling results, it is useful to generate some ground specific results. So on the miscellaneous tab, in the simulation output options, I can select the surface heat transfers to see how much heat transfer happens to the ground. And I, we can also store surface level outputs such as inside surface temperatures. <clears throat> With all this set, we can actually now run a simulation. So I can go to the simulation screen on the analysis tab and press update. <clears throat> I will name the simulation as standard method. Select the uh, whole year for simulation. And on the options tab, I will select model all external reflections and shading of grounds reflected solar. So if you are modeling reflections, you would probably need to include the reflection of solar radiation and light from the ground during the simulations. This can uh, lead to slightly longer simulation times. However, uh, in this case, um, I can do it this first demonstration, but you can look at program help as well to understand how this uh, setting gets control, controls the simulation in more detail. I'll go to simulation manager and use the simulation manager to run the simulation so i let the simulation run in the background and move on to discuss the um, kiva methods and i'll come back to review the completed modeling results um, later <clears throat> 
so the main limitation with standard ground modeling is that it requires predefined ground temperatures these temperatures are rarely known therefore standard methods is not standard method is not recommended in cases where accurate modeling of ground is required kiva is a validated state of the art modeling method where two dimensional ground temperature profiles are created as seen in the image through the three dimensional ground domain this results in accurate simulation of the building and its foundation and the adjacent ground there is minimum minimal additional data required and no noticeable impact on simulation times kiva ground modeling allow you to deal with any kind of ground junctions adjacencies and locations such as dealing with foundations basement walls slabs insulation in various positions kiva basic option can be selected where a single kiva foundation object is used to represent heat transfer to from and within the ground this option is ideal for accurate simulations of smaller buildings such as dwellings however for larger buildings more detailed kiva full method can be used to select different conditions for different parts of the ground domain i'll now go back to the model to show you some of the kiva inputs kiva options and their inputs are also set at the site level kiva basic option can be selected here when kiva basic is selected two new fields become available foundation settings and the kiva foundation itself these represent a single kiva foundation object in kiva basic there is just one foundation for the whole building whereas in kiva full option which we will look later different foundations can be defined separately for different surfaces kiva foundation settings object defines the build, uh, site level settings for um, the ground with these they include soil thermal and surface properties the extent of the ground domain and some calculation options these settings are common for the whole model so whether you are using kiva basic or kiva full just one kiva foundation setting object is required for a simulation the setting the correct soil and surface properties is required in kiva to calculate the heat transfers correctly extent settings define the domain of the kiva slices deep ground depth relates to the distance of ground water level the and the options settings control the detail in which ground slices are modeled modeling in more detail by having finer cells or time steps can lead to increased simulation times program help explains these setting op and options in more detail if required the next object is the kiva foundation object itself kiva foundation object describes the boundary conditions for the ground coupled foundation surfaces in a typical kiva foundation you will define the indoor air temperature this is the temperature to use so uh, this is the temperature to use at the start of kiva calculation this is the initial indoor air temperature generally you should check this box and enter an initial indoor air temperature um, correctly otherwise indoor air temperatures during initialization will be estimated based on zone set points note that when using simple hvac energy plus may set unrealistic initial temperatures and you might see unpredictable results so if you do not specify the temperature um, here
the other foundation elements you define are the additional insulations along the building perimeter these are not related to the insulation layers that you have in your ground construction or below grade walls but additional insulation you might put around the building perimeter only footing and foundation section allows us to model building elements that are below the zone boundaries we typically define building elements around the zones only however additional walls and footings below ground can have a significant impact on heat transfers through slabs so let's look at some examples to understand how these kiva settings can be used let's look at two example cases the left one we have a raft slab foundation and on the right we have a more traditional footing type foundation in the raft slab type situation the main slab is modeled within the ground floor construction element this will include all the construction layers along with any continuous insulation if any within the ground construction itself as there is no footing wall that is above the external floor level wall height above grade is set to 0 the downturn of the thickened raft perimeter can be defined by the wall depth below the slab the width of the footing wall is determined by the net thickness defined by the footing wall construction and its layers now i'll discuss the more traditional footing and foundation the main slab again is modeled within the ground floor construction element wall height above the grade above grade is 0 the depth of the footing wall can be defined by the depth below the slab and in this case it is longer the width of the footing wall is determined by the thickness of the footing wall construction as earlier now there is an additional foundation footing below the footing wall its details are defined separately please note that explicit modeling of footing requires a higher spatial discretization and therefore longer computational times in most cases this does not have a big impact on heat transfer so as with many aspects of your model you may consider the trade off between simplicity and simulation time Kiva allows you to define additional insulation objects along the perimeter of surfaces in different directions. The thickness of insulation is set as per material layer thickness and other relevant dimensions can be defined explicitly. So for example in interior horizontal insulation material of the insulation is EPS with a thickness of 70 mm defined within the material thickness Uh, object material basically the material itself has been defined to be 70 mm width of the insulation is measured from wall interior to the edge of insulation and depth is the distance from bottom of slab which is typically zero in the interior vertical insulation again the material is the same with the same thickness depth is measured from top of the wall to the edge of the insulation exterior horizontal insulation width is measured from the exterior of the wall to the edge of insulation and depth is the distance from the exterior grade in the exterior vertical insulation depth is measured from top of the wall to the edge of the insulation so these are the different edge insulations you can define in kiva let's understand them with an example case i will now create a slab on grade foundation with additional perimeter insulation to show in this model these will be the settings used 
in this example there is a slab with continuous insulation plus additional perimeter insulation elements and a footing wall firstly the continuous insulation will be modeled in the slab construction itself therefore it is not defined as the part of the foundation the other insulation on the perimeter are the ones that will be modeled with the foundation and in this case they are eps insulations with a 70 mm of thickness in interior horizontal insulation width is measured from wall interior to the edge of the insulation this is the case which is 0.5 meters the depth is the distance of the bottom of the slab to the top of insulation which is zero interior vertical insulation is the depth measured from top of the slab top of the wall to the edge of insulation which is about 0.25 meters the footing wall in this case actually starts above grade as this is a slab on grade uh, example and therefore goes from the above grade level to into the ground therefore the wall settings for the height above grade and the depth of the slab would be 0.2 meters and 0.5 meters respectively The footing wall construction thickness defines the width of the footing wall. There is no foundation footing in this example. So uh, these are all the settings needed for this and let's try and set it up in the model. So I will include horizontal insulation. Material is EPS with 70 mm insulation. Width is 0 0.5 as per the example and depth is zero. I will include interior vertical insulation, the same material, but the depth is 0 0.25. Wall height above grade is 0 0.2 meters and depth below slab is 0 0.5 meters. can press OK to save the settings. So as we are using Kiva, none of the other temperatures are used during the simulation. They would still be used during heating and cooling design and sizing calculations. Everything else remains the same as standard uh, method run related to the constructions and the outputs requested. So we can go to the simulation tab and do another run this time i will call this kiva method and rest of the settings remain the same and i can press ok to run the simulation so while the simulation is running i'll quickly discuss the difference between kiva basic and kiva full before we look at the differences between kiva and standard simulation results Kiva full option is available um, in the same place where Kiva basic is. So when I select Kiva full option, I have uh, the details uh, options for modeling Kiva available. The more detailed Kiva full modeling option can be used to select different conditions for different parts of the ground domain typically for larger or more geometrically complex buildings. In Kiva full, the foundation settings remain the same and defined at site level here, but the different footings can now be defined 
for separate parts of the building separately. On the building level, construction tab, Kiva adjacency can be set, where foundations can be defined following the same design builders hierarchy and inheritance rules. I will select Kiva adjacency and set my Kiva foundation item to Kiva foundation. Now this foundation is set for the entire building because I made this change at the building level and is essentially the same as the Kiva basic model which I just ran. However, with Kiva full, I can define more than one type of foundation within the model. So let's assume that there was an extension added to this building at a later date when the building bylaws had changed. So I'll have an extension block. So I will assume that the foundation and the insulation uh, in the foundation width and thicknesses of this block are higher than the rest of the building which was const constructed earlier. So to model this new foundation, uh, I will go to the selected block. On the constructions tab, I will make a copy of this existing foundation element and <clears throat> change this to new specifications. For example, increase the width of the interior horizontal insulation to be longer and create a new material with a thicker insulation level. So I can have EPS 100 millimeter insulation and I will change the default thickness to 100 and assign it for the <clears throat> insulation in this new block. I will rename the foundation and simply assign it to the relevant block surface or um, zone which I need to. So this model um, now <clears throat> has different Kiva foundations for two different parts of the building. Running this again uh, would not create any material difference uh, in the test case which we are doing. So uh, I won't simulate it here uh, but rather just go and show you on the simulation tab Uh, the comp uh, comparing the Kiva and the standard method uh, results which we have. So I'm using results viewer to um, open the simulation result sets together. Yeah. They, op they open the other screen so yeah, so design builder results viewer is a standalone energy plus results viewing application. Here you can view multiple results together to compare them. It also enables you to view outputs that are not available in standard analysis tab graphs in the main design builder applications. So in results viewer, I will go to my monthly. So there are the two results sets are here for Kiva and uh, standard. I will increase these. sort the results by area and try to find ground floor yes here they are so i'm trying to find basically ground floor zones, ground floor surface results that we initially requested. So for example, the surface inside 
phase conduction heat transfers or surface inside phase temperatures let me load the temperatures for the two options uh, not these are the um, inside phase conduction heat transfer so um, <clears throat> for this and i can also add the same thing for the temperatures as well so you can see from these graphs the heat transfer between kiva and standard method are quite different this is mainly because this is a relatively small building and in the standard method we had a constant 18 degrees ground temperature whereas with kiva these temperatures were calculated during the simulation so <clears throat> therefore to summarize um, kiva provides detailed and accurate modeling of the ground it calculates 2d temperature profiles to the three dimensional ground domain standard ground modeling on the other hand uses fixed monthly ground temperatures and uses simple one dimensional heat transfer calculation method as kiva is fast and reliable with no extra work or simulation time we advise that it is the default method you should use in all ground modeling scenarios this is particularly important in cases where buildings have long perimeters or where large or complex foundation and footings are built with additional edge insulation standard method can still be used with large buildings where impact of perimeter is not that significant kiva has some limitations in special cases in those cases standard modeling and fixed temperatures are still used such as during sizing calculations or when you have underfloor heating in the ground slab similarly fixed monthly temperatures will still be used with uh, special f factor and c factor constructions and with some um, HVAC system objects and set point managers. Before I finish, I'll share some free resources that you can use to learn more about Design Builder. You can find the recordings of the earlier webinars on the webinars page here. It covers wide range of topics for example on um, various webinars on modeling hvac systems from simple to much more detailed and com uh, and complex ones or related to different specialist types of systems or uh, advanced analysis such as uncertainty sensitivity etc you can also go to program help uh, our encyclopedic program help has explanation of all design builder settings and data items which i was referring to constantly during the webinar um, it also has section for tutorials and modeling guides this page brings together in one place all the various tutorials and modeling guides that are available in the help arranged by sections for example if you wish to learn more about ashray 90.1 modeling and automated lead mepc report generation here are uh, the modeling guides for these in addition to that um, we have our tutorials if you are new to design builder and want to get a feel for the software here are the lots of free short tutorials on important topics and uh, features of design builders However, if you are looking for a more structured starting point for structured learning of Design Builder, then our on-demand training provides the answer. It uh, is a dedicated modular training. Uh, for example, looking at various uh, topics such as natural ventilation or detailed HVAC modeling or even optimization fundamentals. So that's all for me today. And if you would like to keep in touch, you can subscribe to our newsletter and do follow us on LinkedIn, where we regularly post new content on software news, upcoming events, and updates for webinars, along with tips and tricks on how to use the software.
Okay. Thanks, Nishesh. You've raised a lot of important points and judging by the questions we've received, I think you've given the audience uh, quite a lot of food for thought. I'm sure everybody watching this is now much clearer about the different ground modeling options in Design Builder and which method to use and when, and hopefully also clarify important aspects like when to include or exclude the ground below the building as a layer in the ground floor construction. That will help everyone watching to model ground heat transfer more accurately, which was ultimately the aim of this webinar.